Good evening. I'm Pastor Crowley from St. Peter's in Reedsburg. It's good to be with you again. And it was nice to have uh, Pastor Berkey in Reedsburg today. Uh, tonight, we have, uh, I have a helper with me. He is an SMP candidate, which is a specific ministry pastor candidate, and for the Laval churches. And hopefully, it'll work out that he will be uh, in May starting out and will start out as a vicar. Uh, with uh, this uh, SMP program, he will be what they call a worker priest. So he will be still doing some of his, uh, his uh, occupation, which is he's a welder. Uh, and so uh, a fine young man, and so he's going to have the message, and I'm going to have the liturgy. And we just pray the Lord's blessing upon our service this evening. We begin with our opening hymn. Open my lips, and my mouth would. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Lord, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. You may be seated. We continue with our response of Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the choir anthem, Just As I Am.
Our hymn is Jesus Grant That Balm and Healing, 421. Jesus, grant that home and healing, holy wounds I find. Our Old Testament reading for tonight is from Genesis chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our epistle reading is from 
Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise with the reading of the Holy Gospel for tonight. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse, and serves as our text for tonight's message. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from, and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself. And the Father who sent me bears witness about me. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Protect me from those who come against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow redeemed, what comes to mind when I say a light shining in darkness? What is darkness? What is light? These two words may seem like they're opposite. We even often make comparisons that use them this way. To show things are opposite of each other, we may say, these two things are black and white, or they're as different as night and day. And while these comparisons are helpful pictures for us, light and darkness aren't, much, aren't so much opposite as one is actually the absence of the other. Light is defined as a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. What? Let's just understand that light is what allows us to see things. Now what about darkness? Darkness is defined as a partial or total absence of light. This is a very important point to remember. We'll try to keep that in mind as we move through the message. 
darkness is defined as a partial or total absence of light. We see this first revealed in the very beginning of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 that we just heard read a moment ago. It says God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Let's pause there for just a second. You know, these words are very familiar. And we know what's coming because we're very familiar with the creation story, and I think we quickly pass over this often. But listen to these words one more time. Darkness was over the face of the deep. What do you think that was like? A world with no light. Well, God was not content to leave it that way. And in the very next verse, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. This is another important point to remember. Why is light good? Light reveals what cannot be seen in the darkness. The necessity of light is clearly recognized by several communities located far north of the Arctic Circle. The northernmost communities of the world experience up to two months of continuous darkness. Because of the Earth's tilt on its axis, the sun does not come up over the horizon during this time. Can you imagine a two-month long night where the sun never comes up? The streetlights are always on, and a flashlight or headlight is necessary to venture anywhere outside where the streetlights do not reach. Many take vitamin D supplements and use full-spectrum lamps to try to make up for the lack of UVB radiation, which is the best source of vitamin D that comes from natural exposure to the sun. The lack of daily natural light and dark cycles can also negatively affect sleep cycles, and the continuous darkness often creates a sensation of reduced energy. It is clear that mankind was not made to dwell in darkness. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus says, He is the light of the world, and whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What does Jesus mean when he says he's the light of the world? To help us understand this, it may be helpful to look at another way that the Bible talks about darkness. In many places where the Bible talks about darkness, it is talking about spiritual darkness. But what is spiritual darkness? For an unbeliever, spiritual darkness is an ignorance of Christ, not knowing Christ. Spiritual darkness is being separated from God and not even realizing it. A person in spiritual darkness does not realize how their sins have separated them from God, or that Jesus died to rec for their sins to reconcile them to God. Unbelief would be an example of total spiritual darkness. This image brings me back to our discussion about the first day of creation, and the total darkness that existed before God said, let there be light. Again I ask, what do you think this would be like? Total and complete darkness a complete lack of light. Have any of you ever been in a cave? Often when you go on a guided tour of a cave, when you get far down into the cave, far from the opening where natural light no longer comes in, the tour guide may turn off the lights. Of course they warn you before they do it, and they only leave them off for a few seconds. Have you ever experienced this? I have. And have you ever heard the expression that it was so dark I could not see my hand in front of my face? Well, I had to try it. And I could not see my hand even though I put it right in front of my face. I put my hand so close I could feel my hand touching my nose. And I still could not see it. Now that is darkness. Fortunately, the guy told us to stand still while the lights were out. But what would have happened if I would have tried to move around? I would have stumbled aimlessly. I could have hurt myself, and I would have been completely lost. What if the guy didn't turn the lights back on? I would have been lost in that cave forever. There's no way I could have ever found my way out of that dark cave 
on my own. This is what it is like in spiritual darkness. In spiritual darkness, people wander around aimlessly, unable to find God. Sin separates people from God, and they cannot find their way back to God on their own. <clears throat> this is why Jesus came. Like the light that showed me my way back out of that cave, Jesus is the light of the world, showing the way back to God through faith in him and his death on the cross and his resurrection on Easter morning to free us from the power of sin and to reconcile us to God the Father. The light of Jesus first shined on many of us in our baptism or through the hearing of the promise of God's salvation in Christ through his word. In our baptism, baptism we were baptized into Christ. In our baptism, we were brought out of the darkness and into the light of Christ. The Bible has some beautiful illustrations about Jesus as the light that has come to save us. How he came to bring sinners out of the darkness of ignorance, rebellion, and unbelief that separates them from God, and to bring them into the light of understanding and believing that he has come to die for their sins and to forgive them. That forgiveness of sins and access to God the Father comes only through faith in Christ and his atoning death and resurrection. One of my favorite pictures of Jesus as the light comes from Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, where Matthew recalls the prophecy of Isaiah about Jesus. Matthew writes, The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Before the Holy Spirit brought us to faith, we were in spiritual darkness. And it was the light of Christ that dawned on us and brought us out of that darkness and into his marvelous light. Now let's let us look at the gospel from John chapter 8 one more time. Jesus says in verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What is Jesus talking about? Following him and not walking in darkness. Even though we received the light of Christ when the Holy Spirit brought us to faith, the darkness of our own sinful nature and the temptations of the devil try to push that light away. Look what happened when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. They knew God. They walked with God. But after they sinned, they hid from God because they did not want to reveal their sin to him. Trying to hide or cover up our sin, that is also darkness. Sin likes to hide in the darkness, but trying to hide sin or pretend it isn't there causes us to walk in darkness. We need to daily confess our sins, exposing them to the light of Christ, where he can shine his light of forgiveness on us. Luther said, as Christians we must daily die to sin and cling to Christ. Martin Luther's morning and evening prayers are a good example and habit that helps us daily lay our sins before Jesus and seek his light to shine into our lives. We pray every morning that God would keep us from sin and every evil, and every night that he would forgive us all of our sins where we have done wrong. Our sinful nature is more comfortable hiding in the dark than being exposed to the light of Christ. But are we really able to hide? Just as he knew where Adam and Eve were in the garden, he knows our sins as well. But we must confess our sins and expose them to his light and receive his gracious forgiveness. This Lenten season, may the light of Jesus shine on us anew. May his light expose our sins, that we would die to them and graciously receive his forgiveness and love through the wounds he suffered in our place on the cross. Let us confidently expose our sins to the light of Christ, knowing that his light is greater than any sin. Even all the sins of the entire world could not overcome the light of Christ. Nothing is too big for Jesus. No sin is so great that he cannot forgive it. Jesus will forgive all our sins, no matter how big or awful they may seem. This is why we call the day that Jesus died on the cross Good Friday. With everything that happened to Jesus that day, it didn't seem very good. 
but it is good. Because on the cross that day, he died for all our sins, taking the punishment upon himself that we deserve so that he could forgive us. That is why it's called Good Friday. On that Friday, Jesus hung on the cross in total darkness for three hours as he took the sins of the world, of the whole world, upon himself. And at the end of those three hours, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But because Jesus was forsaken on the cross, we will never be forsaken. Jesus hung there all alone so that we will never be alone. Hanging under the darkness of sins of the whole world and separated from God, Jesus died. But even, the, but even this great darkness could not overcome him. On that first evening morning, Easter morning, Jesus rose victorious from the grave, defeating death and breaking the power of sin that all may be free through faith in him. The victory that Jesus won was not for himself, but for us, for everyone. And another part of following Jesus is sharing that light with others. This idea was well illustrated on a shirt that I once saw. The front of the shirt said, Be the moon. And I was a little confused, but then I saw the back of the shirt, which said, Reflect the sun, spelled S-O-N. While this may seem like just a cute shirt, it expresses a very important principle. At the end of verse 12, Jesus says, We will have the light of life. This light is the light of eternal life that we have from him, and also the light of his grace that shines out to others. The phrase, be the moon, reminds us that we are not the light source, just as the moon makes no light of its own, but only reflects the light of the sun. We also are not the light source, but we are, by the power of his Holy Spirit, to reflect the light of Jesus to others. As we move through this Lenten season, may we walk in the light of Christ, let him expose our sins that we may die to them daily. May the same light fill us with his love and his grace and the assurance of the forgiveness of our sins. May we daily walk in his light so that we are not drawn into the darkness by temptation and our own sinful nature. As we walk in the light, abiding in the light of Christ, through time in his word and prayer and receiving his body and blood in holy communion, may we also reflect his light to others. This is so that they may see the great light in that it may not only expose their sins, but also reveal his forgiveness, and that they may know his overwhelming grace, that they too may walk in his abiding light, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing our hymn, 849. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. With a liberating light, praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease. Calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who Drove up demons with the piercing to edge sword. Praise the one who brings cool water 
to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Jesus died and rose victorious that we may know God by grace.
Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the blessing of us with the opportunity to reflect again on the cross of Christ and receive the promised treasures. Grant that the message of the Lamb of God slain for our salvation bring us the riches of your pardon and peace. Lord, in your mercy, Lead us to see that our sins caused Jesus great agony in the garden, that our sins nailed him to the cross of Calvary, that he was forsaken by his Father so that we might never be forsaken, and that he died so that we may live. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus Christ, grant that, especially during the sacred season, the treasured story of your wondrous love for us would draw us closer to you, enable us to walk in the light of your grace, knowing that you are truly the light of the world, that no, no darkness can overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, lift up troubled souls everywhere. Grant wholeness to those who are hurting in heart, body, and mind. Work your healing power in the lives of those in need, and in the lives of those who we name for you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, of all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works, give to us, your servants, the peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, be defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
Thou who changest not, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Hills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is the sting? Where brave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. O thou thy cross before my closing eyes, shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's being shadows flee.